Welcome back guys. Today we're going to do a video on doing a Kohler service on a K-Series. This happens to be on an old Case 444. This is an early 70s model. Customer from up on the Boston Way. We're doing a full service and a bunch of repair work on this machine. Uh, but this is what we're going to consider a full service on a, on a tune-up for a K-Series Kohler. We already uh, pulled some stuff apart, but what we do is we pull your heads off, decarbon your heads, decarbon your valves your piston combustion chamber and as you can see this one's not too bad but it's definitely bad enough if you look down at these valves you can see there's quite a bit around and under the valves and that will affect your valves closing and they won't make a good seal if you get too much carbon there if you get too much uh, built up in the piston or in the head you'll have catastrophic engine damage the piston will come in contact with the head and the carbon it usually breaks a piston rod sometimes the piston sometimes the head sometimes all three very important you do this on a regular basis, especially with the Kohlers and the Onans. Uh, there's no sense of adjusting valves if you don't do this first. Uh, people adjust valves all the time. We, we hear people take them to the shop and, and uh, you know, this and the other thing. The valves are adjusted and we bring it here and pull the heads off and nobody bothered to clean the heads. And the problem is, again, just carbon around the valves affects your valve clearance and how far these valves are coming down and closing. So you have to clean the valves and the carbon around them off first before you adjust them. We pulled the carburetor and the muffler off to make it easier for you to see, plus we're going to rebuild the carburetor. Uh, to adjust the valves, you don't have to take everything off, but it makes life a lot easier. You, to get into the valves, you take this nut off here, there's a breather behind this plate, and your valves and tappets and everything you adjust are, are there. Pretty straightforward, pretty simple, but we'll show you how to do that. just wanted to give you a quick, quick overview before we start tearing it off and getting into it more. We don't need to show you how the cleaning process very deep. I'm uh, just going to show you what it looks like before and after, more or less. We use a uh, die grinder with a nylon brush, brush on it and some chemical to loosen this up and uh, just bring the piston up, clean everything off, clean around the valves and then bring the piston down and open each valve up individually and clean around the valves, the seat, everything else and uh, do that. Uh, stick a rag down in the, in the piston hole just to keep some of the garbage out. You're going to get some in there but you're going to have to wipe it out and clean it. So here's the picture of the head. We got it soaking. We've seen much worse, but this isn't great. This isn't horrible, but definitely needed to be done. Pretty cool looking old case. Definitely needs some work, but we'll get her in uh, tip top shape for the customer. I'll show you real quick. We cleaned up the combustion chamber, the valves, the piston, all nice and clean. You want to make sure you clean your gasket mating surface for your new head gasket and the head. You see all the carbons removed. This was from somebody else before. They probably used a scraper. What we use is these nylon bristle brushes on the die grinders. These Milwaukee cordless die grinders are awesome, especially for gasket prep and decarbon cleaning. So you, you don't really want to use a wire brush if you can help it. If it's the only thing you got, it's fine. Just be careful. But all these little scratches and gouges you make in here, it just gives the carbon somewhere else to stick. So the smoother all this stuff is, the less the, less the carbon is going to stick to it. So this, this guy works great with this little nylon brush. They make wire brushes for these two in brass. Just got to be careful because your head and your piston are aluminum. And uh, we use this one. This also works really good too. You can use uh, hand tools and hand brushes and, and whatnot. Also, if you got a lot of carbon buildup, you can use a scraper. Again, just be careful. You don't want to gouge. You want to go as flat as you can. And the O-ring picks or little screwdrivers work good to get, get around the valves and the valve seats. The valves and the valve seats that are in here, these are hardened steel. So those can take a little bit of a beating and, and whatnot. So you don't have to quite worry about as much scratching those as you do your piston in your head but this will be absolutely fine it's just you know not as smooth as we like to see it but being 50 years old i'm sure it's been cleaned once or twice you want to make sure this is smooth and clean here for your new gasket as well as long as you didn't have any head gasket problems uh there's no need to really clean this or resurface it if your, your head gasket was fine and the tractor didn't have any issues put a new head gasket on and you'll be fine now we're going to go to adjusting the valves and we sprayed this all down, blew it out with air compressor, sprayed it with some degreaser. Anytime you open up an engine, you want to want to blow everything off it, get it as clean as you can. Ideally, steam clean it. We weren't able to on this one. Um, so you're going to adjust your valves behind this valve cover and breather. This this is a dual purpose. It's a valve cover and a breather. If you notice, it says top on here. You want to pay attention how this comes out. There's a, a sequence on these older ones. There's a bunch of different pieces. In the newer ones, there's only one or two pieces in there. Uh, if you get confused, there's parts diagrams and, and resources online, but just try to take it out and, and put it down the same way so you can put it back in. And 
we took the muffler and the carburetor and everything off it makes this job much much easier um, you don't necessarily have to do it but we're rebuilding the carb and doing a full service you don't have to take this bolt out here but it makes the job easier as well there's a spacer on the back you don't want to lose that spacer either and then if you just disconnect this here and then now this is out of your way i usually just kind of put this back in here that way nothing gets lost put your clip back here so you don't lose it this here is 7 16 again this should not be very tight you don't want to bend or damage this valve cover so when you put it on just kind of snug it up Sometimes this will pop right off. Sometimes you just get a little tiny screwdriver. There's a gasket, so just be careful if you don't have a new gasket. You really should because they do tear often. So if you notice, it says top. You're going to clean this out real well. Put it the same way as it came off. Here's your gasket. Like I said, you're going to want a new one of these most times. And you've got a little piece of filter material. There's a piece of rubber right here. And this piece of steel. And then your reed valve. And this is your breather. And then there's another piece here. Again, you're going to have a gasket in the back. A little gentle persuasion usually helps. You're going to have some oil back here. Again, this is going to say top. Pay attention to that. Also, I don't know if you can see, but there's a hole in here. That has to be cleaned out for this breather to function. Again, it says top. Put this all back here's your gasket we just stack this thing the way it came off and set it aside there's your valves so the first step to do this is you want your engine essentially the easiest way to do it is a top dead center so if you have a timing cover with the hole in the side on your flywheel there'll be an s and a t you're going to want to go to t we pull the heads whenever we service anything, so it's just part of habit, plus it's the way to do a complete service and a valve adjustment. If the heads aren't clean, the valves aren't clean, your valve service and adjustment is kind of useless because these aren't always seating if you got carbon underneath them. So this way here, we know they're clean and they're, they're going to seat like they'd be running. So we always recommend pulling the head off, and this is how you find top dead center. This is your intake valve where your carburetor is. This is your exhaust where your muffler was. So that's, that's the easiest way to remember. Your intake is where your carb is. Your exhaust is where your muffler. So you want this to be a top dead center on the compression stroke. That's important. You want to be on the compression stroke. So we'll just run you through this. Spin this the way your motor turns naturally when it's running. And we'll pay attention to the valves and the piston if you can. All right. Now we're going on the intake stroke. Now this is where you start paying attention. Your intake stroke, your intake valve is starting to close. Our intake stroke is coming to an end. And now we're on compression stroke. And this is where you want to be at top dead center. So when your piston is all the way up top, you go slow at this point. And that's top dead center right there. Now if you go past it, either roll back quite a bit so you get all the slack out of the out of the gears. And then go or go a full revolution. Because if you just go a little bit, there's backlash and, and slack in the engine and play and wear. So your particular engine, you're going to want to pay attention to what the valve lash should be. We've got this handy laying tool. This is real handy. we got one for each. Each make, this one's got a K on it for Kohler's. We got one for the Onins and the Briggs. The blue we use for intake, and the red we use for the exhaust. And uh, this just makes it real simple. It takes some of the air out of it if you use the same thing every time for the same engine. So again, our exhaust valve is back here with the muffler. We, we like to set them at 19 thousandths. Read your book and your, your manual. Uh, this motor calls from 17 to 19 on the exhaust and 8 to 10 on intake. We always go uh, with a little bit more. I'd rather a loose valve than a tight. I check the intake valve, and it, it's pretty tight. I gotta, I gotta really force that in there. You don't want to do it. We'll check the exhaust. The exhaust is not bad, but it's a little sloppy. You want drag on here? There's, there's not really any drag. It's just, just dragging ever so slightly. So we want to tighten the exhaust up a little bit, and the intake is a little tight. So they'll, they'll wear different ways on the engines, different engines. Each each kind of engine can wear differently too. Everybody says, well, why don't they get loose instead of tight when they're wearing? But it depends what's wearing. So if your valve face is wearing and your valve seat is wearing, your valve's going to drop down further and it's going to make your valve clearance tight. If your cam's wearing or your valve stem's wearing or the tappet and followers are, are wearing, then that's going to make your valve loose. So each engine is going to be different. So 
Usually uh, on the engines, if one one's o one is tight, the other one's tight, but not always. And if one's loose, the other one's loose. But obviously this one's a little different. They uh, they each engine wears differently. Depends if it's cooling correctly. If the cooling fins have been been plugged up for a while, what kind of oil you're using, all kinds of different things. So now we're going to adjust this. So I don't know if you can see or not. These tap bits in here, they've got a flat spot on them. See right there, there's a flat spot, and then this side's rounded. So the flat spot is for your wrench. We use these thin Capri wrenches for valve adjustments. They work great. You've got a, quite a bit of room on the Kohlers, but the Onins, you don't. Um, so these, these work real well. You want to use your half inch on your on your tappet here, and then on your adjuster, you're gonna, gonna use your 7 16 up here. And there's a couple different ways to do it. Some guys put the gauge in here as you're doing it. And then, uh, tighten it up against the gauge or loosen it up against the gauge however you want to do it um, or you can just kind of turn them slightly and then go back and forth with your gauge uh, sometimes the gauge is kind of in the way if you do that but we'll, we'll try to show you that just so you get an idea so this one we're going to tighten and you're going to want to go counterclockwise to tighten this up and a little bit goes a long way and as you tighten it you can kind of get a feeling with this for the drag, you want a little bit more. Take it out of the way so you can see what's going on. I said a little bit goes a long way. Make sure you got the right filler gauge. I'm doing the exhaust. A little bit more on that one. Now we've got quite a bit of drag on here. I don't know if you can you can hear it, but you can see it on the the mark there it's probably a little much drag if your valve springs lifting at all that's quite a bit of drag it's, eh, it's probably this one might be all right you can hear maybe just slight drag you don't want your valve spring to be moving at all let's say that one's good at 19 thousandths and so the intake was tight and we're going to loosen this one up you don't want to fight the feeler gauge one in there. If you're fighting it, it's too tight. So to loosen this one up, we want to turn clockwise and send this adjuster down into the tappet. Again, it doesn't take much. Make sure you're using the right one again. This is our ten thousandths. Much better. Just slight drag. If you can hear it or not. I don't have to fight it to go in. That's where you want to be. It's pretty simple. And always double check. That way it just takes any uh, error out of the game. Go all the way around and go back to your intake stroke on your piston. Get yourself a back uh, or a compression stroke. Get yourself back at top dead center compression stroke. That's where you want to be. Check them over again. You just never know if you stuck the wrong filler gauge in there. You got aggravated at the neighbor's dog barking or kids screaming. Somebody called, customer came in, whatever. So then just put everything, clean this up. If you didn't change your oil first, we change your oil last after this. You can spray this down a little bit with brake clean. Don't get too much in your engine. Clean this out, blow it out. So after you clean this all up here, we always like to put a little bit of, you can put some spray gel lube in there or some Lucas or some oil. But once it's cleaned up, you want to make sure these are lubed up still. Any brake clean, get where the valves hit hit the tappets. And then down before the tappets go and up top where the valves go up. Just get some clean, fresh oil. Make sure it's clean. Keep contaminants out. And we do that on all of them. But we like to get the valve uh, cases cleaned up and stuff when we do this. Once you do that with some brake clean, like I said, the brake clean and contaminants go in the engine a little bit. That's why we change the oil before we start it back up. Once you get everything buttoned up, then change your oil and all the contaminants and come down and you're good to go. Replace your gaskets and just put this all back together the same way. Remember the little breather hole we told you about on the bottom of this? You want that to make sure that's cleaned. If that's plugged up, you're gonna have all kinds of problems and oil pushing out. This is gonna go back together the same way. If you get confused, there's online resources and parts manuals, but that's all there is to adjusting the valves. Again, very important, clean your combustion chamber and your valves before you do this. Now we're gonna show you how to install the head gasket. Not rocket science here, but you may have studs, you may have bolts, you may have a combination like this one does. 
Uh, we've got done, all this is clean, the valves are adjusted, new head gasket from Kohler. Make sure your holes are dry, blow them out with some air. You don't want water in there because if you get water or fluid, there's too much uh, spray of some sort in there, you could potentially damage the uh, engine block or the bolt as you're tightening and torquing it down. So make sure those are dry and cleaned out. The bolts are all good to go. Your hardware that's going back on is clean. These studs can be a little bit of a pain to, to work these new gaskets on. The bolts are a little bit easier. Um, you kind of got to just do it evenly and it just, it kind of fights like that and you don't want to bend your gasket. So kind of got to just work them a little, little at a time. Don't force it. Don't manhandle it. You can pretend you like it and treat it nice. You want to make sure it's all the way down before you start cranking on it, otherwise you'll damage it. We cleaned up our surface on the block. We cleaned up the surface on the head. The head's all ready to go, nice and clean. It's important that you torque these down to their proper specs and the proper sequence. I'm not going to show you every single one. I'll get all these back on, and then we'll come back. Okay, we'll just show you the basic procedure for torquing down the heads. So you don't need to see all nine bolts. With these studs, if your stud came out in one piece, don't worry about it. Um, you can take the jam that's off the top once you get them out and then assemble everything. You can leave the nut on the bottom and, and then uh, go ahead and torque the nut and the stud all at once. These three actually came out in one piece. <clears throat> wasn't worth messing around with. You'll, you'll achieve the same thing as long as you can get down here and really torque the nut on the bottom is kind of the key thing. When they come out one piece, just put a wrench on the nut on the bottom, a wrench on the top, and they'll break apart. So the studge, you take your heavy flat washer that applies the pressure, spreads it out. Okay, and then you take your nut. We put a new nut on here because the other one was kind of funky. First, you do put them all in hand tight. You don't use any tool. Put it in hand tight. Follow the sequence. We'll post the proper sequence. And what you're going to do is set your torque wrench up to 15 pounds or so for the first round. Do your pattern at 15 pounds. Then set it up for 30 at your final torque. But we'll show you just on the one here. If you can hear it or see it, but there's 15 pounds. Torque wrench is breaking, clicking. So go do your pattern and then come back and set your torque wrench to your final torque at 30 pounds. And then... Follow your, pat your torque pattern again, which ones you need to do, and then come back. You're at 30 pounds. There it is. You see it, hear it. Then go and do your torque pattern. Put your spacer on. Put your lock washer on. Put your jam nut on. Keep your torque wrench out. And I use the torque wrench to put these jam nuts on too at 30 pounds. That way everything's even all the way across. You're not trying to torque the stud anymore. There it is. The head bolts without the studs. Put the washer down, put the bolt on. Same thing. And there you go. And then finish, finish it all up and then put your spark plug in and tighten that down. Put your plug wire on after you put your heat shield on. And that part's all set. You're good to go.